Thank you, Brother Gene. I was, uh, I was reminded earlier this week uh, of a passage of scripture from one, from one of our dear brethren. And this was uh, from the book of uh, Genesis where he talked of uh, Jacob coming to a place. And in that place, uh, Jacob fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, he dreamed a dream. And in that dream, God revealed himself to him yes. and of who he was and what he was going to do. But upon waking up, the scriptures tell us that Jacob was fearful. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. See, I desire not to be of this type of spirit. See, I want to be able to recognize God's working. And I want to be able to give him the praise and the glory that he deserves for, for this so great salvation. So this, these times of refreshing water renewals are very precious to me. For this is the work of the Lord. This is the, the Lord is involved in what's going on here. If you just think about what is, is being declared here, Christ is being lifted up and exalted. The, the word of God is preeminent. It is the authority. As we have a saying on, on our Friday night meetings, we haven't gathered to play a game of Scrabble. See, that we're, that the word of God is preeminent here. And is being declared because this is the power of God into salvation. And if you want to be saved, then you're going to need a lot of God's word. And I thank the brethren for declaring that word to us. And then there's the fellowship of the saints. The ones the scriptures call the partakers of the heavenly call. See, we're partaking of that call from Jesus to draw near. Come unto me, whosoever will. And it's the encouragement of the brethren, the holy brethren, that help us and assist us to draw near unto God. I re I'm reminded of the, of the prophet who had declared that our eyes may be enlightened and that he would give us a little reviving in our bondage. Amen. See, these are times just like that. That we still have this bondage of this, of this earthen vessel around us. We are encompassed about it. There's no shedding it in this life. And God, through, the, through his word, through the proclamation of his word, gives us a little, a little reviving, see, a little strengthening to continue to, to fight the good fight of faith. So I want to be able to recognize God's working and God's moving and God's saving us. And so I want to ask you, do you believe that, that Jesus is here right now? Yes. Do you believe that? I'm, I'm glad. You, then you're going to enjoy hearing this. This is this. I want to read this from Luke chapter 24. This is about the um, two brethren who were walking from the road to Emmaus, and it says that Jesus Himself approached and began to travel with them. Now think about this in context of what's going on here right now. See, Jesus approached, began to travel with them. This is about this is the risen Savior now we're talking of, and He said to them. What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And he said they were sad. See, because they hadn't seen it yet. They, didn't, they didn't, didn't know for sure that Christ was going to rise. The promises that he had made were sure. And they were saddened. And as the conversation goes, finally Jesus said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken. See, in beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. Well, we've heard quite a bit from Moses and the prophets these last couple of days. In the Moses and the prophets, we are told, declare the sufferings of the Christ and the glories that are to follow. And that's what the brethren have been faithful to declare unto us, this glorious news. And then they continued on. And then he had reclined with them at the table. He supped with them. And then he vanished from their sight. And then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road and while he was explaining the scriptures to us? Amen. See, this is exactly what was, is going on here these last couple of days. That Jesus is speaking to us. He's explaining the scriptures to us 
to the brethren, to these, these ones that God has gifted to declare his gospel unto us. And so if, if this burning, if you, if you experience what the, what, the, what the prophet here, or what Jesus is talking about, this burning inside of you, this is a good thing. I desire this for myself. I, I, I pray for it for all brethren to have this burning inside them of what, of, upon hearing what God has said. See, this is the new covenant way. That Jesus, see, Jesus said, they will all know me from the least to the greatest of them. And I, and I praise God for that because I fit in there. I can fit into from the least to the greatest. And God, he, Jesus said, I will teach them. There will be no need for a man to teach them. I will teach them. And this is what he's doing. Through his Holy Spirit, he is teaching us. And as, as we receive his word, our hearts, he's, he's expanding our hearts. They're, 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 they're expanding. And sometimes I think we don't, we don't, we don't realize the fullness of, of the capacity of how we can expand, yeah. of how the Holy Spirit can expand our hearts. But see, listen to what Paul prayed for in, in Ephesians. He prayed this for the Ephesians. He said that they would all be filled up to the fullness of God. There's a lot of filling left to do. I, I, can, I can confess that. I need a lot more expanding to be able to hold the fullness of God. Now, this is a great work. It's going to require a lot of God. It's going to require a lot of Jesus. It's going to require a lot of the Holy Spirit. But God has promised us that he is, he is faithful. He will do that what he has said. Amen. He is going to expand us. So part of, that, part of that expansion requires our participation in the sense of speaking forth. It took me quite a few years to, to, uh, to grab hold of this. A lot of uh, encouragement from the brethren, which I am thankful for. I still need to hear that encouragement about speaking what God has given you. See, this is how we bless and encourage one another. This is how we bless the saints. See, this is, this, these, this is these, these gifts that God has given us, this ministry we can have one to another. Speaking that what God has given us. I have, uh, over the past few weeks, been given opportunity to uh, speak with Brother Dean Bolt. And we seem to have a, uh, a, a text that comes up quite often as we gather. As a matter of fact, we encourage one another in these things. And he says, as, as we see each other, he says, have you been walking around Zion lately? Have you considered its bulwarks? He says, what have you seen? What has God shown you? Have you seen the palaces? What have you seen in these palaces? See, we want, we want to hear these things because these are the things of, that, that build our faith. Amen. And so we, we, we don't want to stop there. See, we want to st if the next verse down, it'll talk about after you've seen this, you go tell the next generation. Mm -hmm. See, it's not just to be kept for what God shows us in Zion. These things are to be brought to the next generation. That's us, the saints of God, that generation that is going to declare Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, we are the ones that have declared Jesus, and I, I, I've been blessed by how Brother Al had talked to me, and he says, you know, if, 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 if only Satan can stop the saints from speaking, then he's won. Yeah. See? Think about that. Yes. So we, we wanna, I want to encourage you, brethren, as, as, that, as that burns in your heart, these things that you've heard, to come forth and share them with the brethren, to share them with the brethren this day. This is, this is our discussion time. This is a time to bring forth these things that you have heard, that you have held in your heart, that you've hid this word in your heart. Share these with the brethren. I just want to um, begin this time trying to put down a, a, a firm foundation here, something that we can build upon. See, we, want to, we want to remember where we, what we've heard. We've heard about the love of God this week. This is very precious, very precious to God. And what I was thinking about when, it, when, I, when it, as the brethren were speaking here is that love is discerned by us by its cost. See, as, as we begin to see what the cost was to both to God and to Jesus, therein is love. See, the... the uh, I was thinking about this, this cost to God. There is, a, there is a definite cost to God and, and wrote down some of these thoughts from the, from the scriptures here. He was separated from the, one, from the one who was with him from in the beginning. 
In the beginning, they were together. The Word and God. But there came a point in time when there was a separation. He was separated from one, the one whom, from whom they created all the worlds. And the one whom, whom they, they said, let us cre create man. Let us create man. They were involved together. The Word and the Father. God was separated from the one that he had loved with an everlasting love. And then it gets more intense here, brethren. For it was God himself who would make Jesus sin. Jesus, the one who knew no sin, would become sin. And God would have to strike Jesus with the rod of his vengeance, the one that he had loved with an everlasting yes. love. God would have to bring upon the one whom he loved before the foundations of the world his full wrath and his full anger. He would have to wound him. He would have to bruise him. He would have to chastise him. Now this was required in order for the sin of the world to be put away. See, what, what, what the scriptures are talking about is about, the, about sin and salvation. See, there was... The sin had separated man from, from, from the Creator. It's as if sin stole us away. But God would not allow this to happen, or to, to, to happen forever. He had a plan. See, He was going to bring us back. But all this had to occur in order for us to be brought back to God. God knew this cost before time. He knew that this was the way, the only way, and thankfully, we are told in the scriptures that God did not spare his only son, but delivered him up for us. This is precisely what God did there in his love. What about our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ? How about his cost for his love of man? The scriptures tell us about him being in the form of man. I'm sorry, being in the form of God. In the beginning was the word. Now think about that. In the beginning was the Word. And as the scriptures continue, he is not referred to the Word anymore. He is referred to as Jesus. He is referred to as the Son of God. He's referred to as the Son of Man, but not the Word. See, something happened here. Something happened that changed, has changed this, this position forever. I would like to know more about this. I'd like to hear more about the sufferings of the Christ that the prophet spoke of. See, and he was willing to let that go. He was willing to let that go. He emptied himself. He made himself of no reputation. He became acquainted with sorrows and with griefs. He was despised and rejected by the ones he had created and loved. He had to learn obedience for what he, through what he suffered. He even had to become obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. This is the everlasting one we're talking about. And he subjected himself to death, even death on a cross. See, Jesus counted the cost. He knew what it would take of him to become the captain of our salvation, of redeeming us back from the power of sin, and bringing us back within to the presence of the holy God. See, there's a lot required here. There's much required here, and Jesus fulfilled all that was required of God in order to bring us back. And knowing all that was required of him, of knowing all the sufferings that he had to go through for us, Jesus said, here I am, Lord, send me. Here end is love. Now I touched on a number of, a few of the examples of the cost to God and to his son for redeeming us back to himself. I think of what uh, Brother Ricky talked about in, that, in, the, in Ephesians 2, 7 there, in, in the ages to come. See, it's, this is something more we're going to have to see. It's going to take the ages to come for us to see the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. See, these are some of the thoughts I had that, were, that prompted me from what the brother had preached upon. And so now I will give you opportunity to, to declare what you have seen, to bless the brethren, to praise God for, the, for his great salvation. The one thing I do ask, though, is uh, as you have something you want, you want to share with us, is to please raise your hand. 
and I will identify you, and then if you would, please uh, come up front and, and say what the Lord has given you to say. <laughs> I said, just please tell them this one thing, that every heart here has talked about the love of God out flowing and being demonstrated as it says in John especially. We've been absorbed in that book. John chapter 2, John chapter 3, John chapter 4. As he is, so are we. As he is love, so are we. As he is pure, so are we. As he is faithful, so are we. This is love through us. But here's the, all that for one thing. The demonstration of God's love seen in the book of Acts. Sister said, silver and gold have I none. What I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Demonstration. The word love is never used in the book of Acts. Afternoon, brother. It's good once again to be with you, brother. It's not... It's not good enough, though, that we just meet together for one week. So I know our Lord and Savior, he's preparing a time where we can be together and leave no more. So I look forward to that time. And uh, there's a lot of things I'd like to say to you, but I'll make it short for our, our time here as a dis audience discussion. But things I've been thinking about. Four years ago, I came to this renewal for the first time. And a lot's happened with me my family and um, the love of God has really taken a hold of myself and my wife and my kids and we've been through a lot a lot of good good things since the time I first came to this renewal until now brother Kevin has blessed me so much <laughs> brother Ricky Sam's has been faithful To the love of God. The Lord has used men like this to change my life, my family's life. And I'm so thankful that. Excuse me. I'm so thankful that uh, people like Brother Ricky Sims are not worried about what men think, they're worried about what God thinks. I've seen him be put through the ringer. He's poured his heart out to people. And he's been put through the ringer. And this is how I know that God is too. He's put his heart out. He's loved us. And he's, he's done everything for us. And to have people still reject him, I can't imagine what God feels. But I, want, I, wanted, to, I wanted to read the scripture. Because of what God has done, because of his love, and because of what Jesus has done. In Philippians um, 2.20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also we look for our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto a, his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. It doesn't matter what people are doing or saying right now, brethren. What matters is that our God, our Lord and Savior, is able to subdue. And he, he is going, there's going to come a time very soon where all mouths are going to be closed. And that there's no more going to be talking about foolish talk anymore. And everyone is, every knee shall bow and every tongue can confess. And I'm so glad that we today can come together and see this clearly. I thank the Lord for his love that has brought us here today to be able to see that. Because I, I understand that if it wasn't for his love, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Yeah. We... What we deserve is to be separated from our God for eternity, but his great love 
has drawn us near to him. And because of his love, that we may be with him for eternity. Aren't you thankful that he has taken the scales off of your eyes and that he has brought you to himself? I am thankful. We serve a good God, and I love him so much, and I am so thankful that we today can hear, come here and proclaim his love. We serve a good God. Amen. It's the love of God, and that he demonstrated that love in sending a Savior. See, there's coming a soon day when he's going to demonstrate that love again, when he sends our Lord back again. But he's not going to come back this time as that, that babe in the manger. See, he's coming back as the king of glory, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And, and because he loves us, see, he is going to take us back. He is going to bring us back into his presence where we will see him, where we will reign with him forever. I think I could add anything to what any of the brethren have said. But I wanted to thank them for what they've said. And something that Brother Seth said the first session, I've been thinking of over and over and over. He said the very last sentence that he said, a statement that he made, he said, take every desire to God. Afterwards, I talked to him about that, and he said, he quoted a poem. Of course, I couldn't quote that for you, but he said the gist of the poem was, you take all your desires to God. And if God says no, then you pray that he'll take that desire away. Yeah. And that made sense to me. But as I mused upon that, I thought, but if your desire is for God, he will never say no. He will never, ever say no if your desire is for him. Yeah. And um, I wanted to, to uh, thank the children, wonderful, wonderful children. And I thought how the parents are passing the baton to the next generation. Yeah. And I thank the Lord that he has left me live long enough out of eight children. Maybe in some way I've passed the baton to my son. But I, um, I wanted to say that the love of God has been demonstrated here, it's already been said, in the brother. And each one has received from God fruit. It's God's fruit, and they've borne it out. They've, they've labored, and, and it's, uh, we are partakers of it. These three days, we come in for more filling to receive more. Every year, for 15 years, this has been going on, these kind of gatherings. We only see one another sometime that one time a year. But what a blessing it is to see that they're still contending, still being faithful, and still praising God and desiring to know more. Yeah. And the other thing is that um, at the, out of the 15, I made 14 of them, and I was told not to ever do that again, but made me miss that. Well, Brother Gibbons, uh, he's bossy and all this. Uh, the the um, brethren, when I was starting out Tuesday morning, and I was busy with the children, but I could pray. And I thought, well, I'm praying for myself too, because um, I wanted to come to be refreshed, and I knew that I wasn't gonna be disappointed. I've never uh, been disappointed at one of these. And, and I have to share this again, though I have shared it with some. I thought, uh, they're ministers, high-powered ministers. They could go to no higher power than the one they received it from. And, and God desires such hearts and minds as that for him to show forth more of his word and his love for us in, in these saints that have labored to come here and minister to us. And I want to give thanks for that. And for these young men and young women, uh, that means a lot to me I have shared somewhat in their life, not as a parent, but uh, the parents trusted me enough to give them to me for a few uh, minutes out of, uh, as in Sunday school time. I have Brother Jonathan McCulfer, my grandson, and Brother Paul McCulfer. And I would read to them a Bible story. They didn't get to see the picture. And afterwards, I'd ask Brother Jonathan McCulfer and Justin to come up and tell me the story. And just looking at the picture, they didn't miss much. I can tell you that was a blessing 
just to have those young men, but it's a bigger blessing to see the good stewardship that the, the parents have spent in their lives and raising them up, godly young men that love to talk about the Lord, that know what they're talking about and they're living it. And that is a great blessing indeed. And Brother Jonathan, who just was here, has been entrusted to my care and keeping. Sometimes he enjoyed it, sometimes not, but, um, but the parents trusted me to do what was right for the children. And, um, and I was thankful for that, that they could trust me not to do them harm or take them someplace that would not be uh, to their like or dislike. They um, grew up, I grew up with them, because they're ministering to me now. These young people that I thought I was helping along are now ministering to me. That is a blessing. This young lady is another one, sister. Ada, we heard from her. I didn't spend as much time caring for her in the same way, but I watched her grow also. Uh, Brother Danny and Sister Nell's children, I didn't minister them the same way, but I had them taking them places where their parents would allow them to go. And, and sometimes there was only one other adult with 10 or 12 children, but they trusted us. Now, I, I, I was thankful for those times of being able to share that in the lives of those children and then take back things to the parents that I could share with them. And Brother Allen's sister Sarah's children, they're not all here, but some of them are, and, and I thank God for every one of their lives. Um, these um, thoughts about um, the apostles and the, uh, Jesus himself, but uh, the apostles testified that we have seen John, and he said, we have seen and handled, we're, well, we're still seeing and handling it because it's the same word being handed down through those faithful servants. Yes. Now there's those who don't handle it correctly, but thank God we are able to say that we have received that faithful word that they had seen and handled, and so that's what we pass on to anyone and everyone that would receive it. And I'm thankful that we have something to say to people that spend three days to come. I thought of those that uh, uh, sometimes they, their beds are uh, something that's familiar to them and a strange bed isn't. Well, I, I've never had that problem, but, uh, but, but see, there's, we don't think of our creature comforts, the things that we have to give up at a time like this. Yes. The Lord enables us to endure these three days, and by endure, I don't mean it as in grinding out <laughs> and waiting for the end. We hate to see the end come. That's a terrible time for me. I, I uh, but I wanted to say that to the children especially, I pray that they would continue this walk and to declare it, not be ashamed of it, and God won't be ashamed of you, and Jesus will confess you to the Father that you have been a faithful servant and you will be welcomed into his eternal place of abode. Brother Levain talked about these, um, uh -huh, the which? Heritage. Heritage, well, that's what you have. You only have this short time to instill in your children, even yourself. You only have this short time. But I like what Brother Fred used to say, this is our infant day. In eternity, how much more we're going to learn? Because we had a heart to receive it here. He'll teach us more there. So I thank you. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, isn't it? Yes. I love it. The Lord knows I love it. I love to glorify him. And I adore to, to comfort his people whom he redeemed in his own blood. Amen. I just love it and enjoy it. And I, I had to come up here because I want to. And, and it says in the scriptures, it says, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amazing. God give us the faith, and he still rewards us. It's amazing, it's amazing God. We don't deserve anything, nothing. 
but he gives us he gives us everything through his son jesus christ and another text is uh, is faith hope and charity these three the very precious thing but the greatest of these is charity and we get it all through in in god in christ jesus so i thank the lord for all you brethren who minister are here I, I enjoy you very much and I told other brothers and sisters that it's just like this place is a stepping stone before we get the glory. Quick technical note, this microphone here is my friend and it's your friend too. So I don't want you to be scared of it. The recordings are uh, a valuable asset to all of us. So uh, I want to encourage you to uh, get close and use it. <clears throat> uh, a thought that I had uh, this morning about our meetings together the first renewal that I was at was number four. And so this is 11 years that I've been coming to the renewals. <clears throat> and over the years, there's some new ones here, like the Souter brethren are new, for the Levi and Sister Amanda are new uh, this year. <laughs> I'm sure there's a few other ones that this was their uh, first year or first couple of years, I believe the Murphy brethren, it's their first year. Uh, but over the years, um, I have become, I've been benefited by all, all of you. And so spiritually, in our, in our journey to heaven, I become, I'm a debtor to every one of you. I owe you. Because every one of you have added to my faith. And uh, one sister particularly, I, Sister Irene Hill, she meets with us on uh, her and Brother John uh, meet on Sunday night and Friday night at our assembly, and she always thanks us for the messages, and and uh, she just she just thinks that she doesn't do anything for us. She comments on this all the time, and uh, and I, I tell her that she does because she has a hunger for what we're doing, and so we also are a debtor to her because she she loves what we're doing, and if you've ever been on this side of the auditorium speaking somebody that enjoys listening to you is a very good very good sight Amen. Uh, and so as we're we're journeying along I shared this with the the brother on Sunday morning we're walking in the walking in the light we're walking along and on Saturday we're preparing for what we're gonna give to the brethren and a lot of Saturdays I think I'm walking pretty good and uh, trekking along pretty good and feeling uh, very uh, have a lot of anticipation about the Lord's Day. I'm walking along in the light and get there Lord's Day morning, and I'm I'm really anticipating sharing what I've been seeing, and uh, think I'm walking pretty good, you know, pretty good pace along in the truth, and then we get to the fellowship and and we start sharing, and and Brother Gibbon goes vroom <laughs> like this, and he's walking a lot faster than I was, <laughs> and so what I wanted to share with you by that is that the, the fellowship of the brethren as we get together, there's a, a God built into the fellowship a, a uh, provoking quality. And so we, we provoke one another. And so if we, is, is the moment that we're born again, if we uh, live on an island, uh, never see any other brethren that's born again, we're probably not going to walk very swiftly. And as we meet together and provoke one another and see others running in the truth and and uh, walking about these high places uh, with hinds feet, as David said. Amen. And then it, it, we see Brother Ricky up there and he's like, hey, Grace will take us up that far. You know, you're, you're speaking about provoking there. And just what Sister Becky said, you know, when, you see the, uh, when you see the saints uh, once a year and, 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 to, and to see them and be blessed that God has kept them in his love. See, yes. Brother Aaron has, has encouraged us to keep in the love of God. But see, God is kind of keep us in his love also is as well and uh, I was thinking about that in uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God see if you're desirous of these things God will keep you in a place where the word is being proclaimed so we can give thanks to God when the, when the word is being proclaimed for for God is in this God is, is 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 sending us those those ones that he has prepared to declare the word of God my family and I have been uh, attending the renewals or not att attending uh, Word of Truth Fellowship uh, for the last uh, couple of years uh, for, for Friday nights for 
uh, at least a couple of years, maybe longer. And then on Sunday nights, uh, since he started the, the, the speaking on the tabernacle, and those of you that have heard uh, any tapes on the tabernacle uh, can't help, but uh, I've been transformed uh, by the, the thoughts of what God has done to bring salvation to us. And so we, we've, been a, a part, we've been a part of their life for longer than that, but have been a part of the fellowship for the last couple of years. And, and I've heard talks on, on renewal, and, and it, always, it always sounded nice, and it always sounded good, but I thought, why do these people come from all over the place just to meet together? And it's not just for evening revival, one sermon. It's all day long. And I, I, I thought... These, these people don't have anything better to do. <laughs> in, the last, in the last four weeks, uh, we have, it's always been a matter of, of prayer. And uh, I, I know that um, Eva's always been very good about making sure that during our prayer times that pray for the renewal, pray for the renewal. And I thought, Okay, we're going to pray for the renewal. That's coming up. That's something we should do. Not knowing really what we were praying for. Um, this, has been tr this has been tremendous. Uh, I've, I've heard quotes from my own children who sat uh, on the first day and listened to um, morning's sermons and afternoon sermons. And I come in after work and they said, the sermons are too short. <laughs> and that is exciting, to know that you want God's word so much that when they're done, you're not done. Yeah. And you want more, you know. Uh, it, it's, like, it's, like, it's like honey. When, when, when Aaron finished, I thought, oh, I wish he would not quit. I, I felt like it was, it was honey uh, to my mouth, and, and I did not want to quit, uh, quit eating. Um, all this to say that, that people, people that are looking for greater things receive greater things. Amen. You know, the, the story of the, of the pearl of great price uh, and, and also the, the, the parable of the, the treasure that was in the field. Both those men weren't just uh, going across the beach or just happily walking across the field. They were looking for something. The man who collected pearls was looking for a pearl. The man in the field was looking for something of great value. And then when they found it, they sold all and bought it and received that to which they were looking for. Unless you are looking or seeking for greater things, you will, as Brother Bill Dinwiddie said, you will pass over the love of God. How many others could have been walking across the beach and saw that pearl and not even realized it because they weren't looking for greater things? Or how many other people could have walked across that field but didn't pay any attention to the value that was there and just walked on? The Bible says that those who seek me, find me. Amen. It also says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. Amen. I was sitting back there thinking, I have nothing to say. Nothing. After two days of listening to talks about the love of God, I, who love to talk, have nothing to say. I want to encourage you guys that any chance you get to talk about the love of God, use it. So this is mine. Um, I am an average teenage girl. <laughs> I think I'm an average teenage girl. Anyway, but um, after these talks, I know that I can get through my entire life from this point on because I know that the creator of the universe loves me. My father died for me. And I can carry through the rest of my life. And if this is my last renewal, I am eternally thankful 
that it's about the love of God. And so I want to thank you all, because if you didn't notice, this renewal was just for me. Because every word you said cut my soul and spirit. And I want to thank you guys. There are advantages to being the village idiot as I am, inasmuch as even though I still have questions and confess I do not understand all these deep things of God, y'all still love me. There are advantages to being the village idiot. If your heart's clean, if the questions that you ask sound dumb but sincere, if in your attempt just to be a child of God, you act like a child. In Ephesians, the second chapter, I'd almost want to get given and Seth in an argument, if I could, so I could find out the answers to some of my questions. Well, because in that place where it talks about the great love of God and his mercy that through Jesus Christ saves us, it tries first to describe us who we are. And I get confused because it says we are sons of disobedience. It says we are children of wrath. Well, you need to sort that out for me because... Somebody else during this whole series said, God reached down into the dust and after his own image made man. What is my basic nature? Am I a creation of God or am I an object of wrath? Oh. See, I got a trouble with that. Either down deep inside me is something that still is of him or... I'm a son of a gun. Maybe both, but look. It says that we are, up earlier, we are, just to communicate with my father-in-law, we are children of disobedience. Now, I don't know whether that means that my parents were ornery or if I am. I fall down further when it goes down and says technon. I, we are children of of wrath. Does that mean that I've been born because my parents were angry with each other? It doesn't sound right. The New International, which I carry around in my pocket and I just looked at, confuses it further by saying that we are objects of wrath. I think that's going a little far because that's not what the text says. We are children of wrath. Now, if you two brothers would have an argument and sort that out for me, I'd really appreciate it because I'm the village idiot. Godness in his likeness. One important part of that, being a person like God, is that we have responsibility for choices. We have freedom to obey and love or freedom to defy and forget who we are. Adam and Eve had everything right and uh, everything was new and working right when God said it was not good for a man to be alone, then made Eve and Eve had an uh, ideal situation but she let the devil turn her attention to what she might want for herself, that the forbidden fruit might add something to her life. And he suggested, why, it'll just make you more like God. And instead of her remembering that she had all the favor of God and, and everything could be received from him that was desirable, she exercised her power of choice and considered well, even questioning the truthfulness of God or questioning the goodness of God as if God was withholding something from her that she had a right to, that, that was outrageous. Uh, I, I don't see how any woman could get that bad. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, that's what happened. But aren't we all doing this? This is how we became children of wrath instead of children of God in fellowship with him. Adam and Eve cut themselves off from the source of life. And God invented death to cut, keep them from living forever and put them out. And then he used death as the means of buying them back. You've know, mentioned that before and you need to think of that. 
I just want to say something in addition, not so much in connection with what he said. But well, Michael was so good in bringing us the conditionality. I knew a book years ago, If So Be, by Guy Duty, Guy G U Y D U T Y, published by uh, Bethel Press, St. Paul. And it's out of print now, I think, but I lost my copy somewhere. But it was on the conditional statements of the New Testament. Nearly every book, or maybe every book of the New Testament, he made quotations of the conditions stated. And it was very valuable that way. And I've either given to somebody, loaned to somebody, and I would like to recommend to you if you find a copy, or you can make your own. Just start in with Matthew and read those if clauses and take if very seriously and uh, take the uh, speech by Michael. Yet we are told that God would have all men to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 4. And come to a knowledge of the truth. We read in 2 Peter 3, 9. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we need to realize it's God's choice. You know, sometimes people sing loudly, Jesus never fails. But Jesus wants to do more than he gets accomplished in the fact that he gives us this power of choice. Just think of the dreadful power of choice. Somebody pointed out here that the oceans obey the Lord, the storms obey the Lord, the natural world obeys the Lord, even the devil knows his limits. It's only man that can shake his fist at God and say, I won't do it. It's only the weak that are deceived by Satan that will say, I can't do that because I'm not big enough. Well, God's big enough. God's able. He's able. Trust him. That's what we're talking about here. Now, don't just think that this session's over to be forgotten. If we mean what we're saying here, we're going to pursue the knowledge of his love. I'm impressed by Paul's prayers in the Colossian letter, the ninth verse, first chapter, and the Philippian letter, the ninth verse. I want to read one of them to you, Colossians 1, 9. And so, from the day we heard of it. Now, this is a church Paul had never visited. They didn't know him by face. We have not ceased to pray for you. That's one thing. Asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. To lead a life worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. We don't live so much righteous life to save ourselves. He's already saved us. Right. We live to please him right. and to maintain our faith that we may be in the faith when he comes. Amen. Because, I mean, excuse me, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power. Now we talk about weakness, but we don't talk enough about power. And still Paul prayed or said that he wanted to do, do everything to know the power of his resurrection. <clears throat> Strengthened with all power according to the glorious, his glorious might for all endurance and uh, patience with joy, mm -hmm. giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, the dominion of darkness, and transferred us or transformed us into the kingdom of his beloved son, or the son of his love, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Four great gifts he wants to give us, the forgiveness of sins, the new nature by the spirit of Christ, eternal life, and belonging to one another in fellowship in the family. And that last one is not practiced enough among us, but those are four great sides of salvation. <clears throat> in Colossians 3, if you read 3, 1 to 17, you've got a great rise. I, I urge you to uh, do that. Set your mind on the things above. But at 16 and 17, the last two verses, he gives a recipe. You know, I haven't liked broccoli very well most of my life. But that broccoli soup was good. I'd like to have the recipe. <clears throat> Listen. 
Paul says at the end of the 15th chapter, giving thanks unto God. And the 16th verse begins, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That means take time, make time, not only to read the words, but to meditate and analyze and compare and memorize and personalize the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The second one is, with all wisdom, teach and admonish one another. Encourage and strengthen, and we do this matter provoking one another. Very good for you to think of this. Amen. In the churches of today, it's kind of taboo to try to teach anybody anything or admonish anybody about anything. It's supposed, you're supposed to let everybody feel good about themselves and never risk suggesting anything could be improved. That's too bad. Now, it's also too bad that the King James Version and others muff up these two uh, things by trying to interpret the participles as, sub as subordinate adverbial clauses. The Greek has a habit of making one imperative and then adding on additional ones in the form of a participle. And they ought to simply be translated as coordinate clauses. Let the word dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, sing with gratitude in your hearts unto God with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and whatever you do, in word or in deed, word on the telephone, word on a date, word on a vacation, word on the job, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What does that mean? As his agent, on his behalf, right. with his power, right. just be his representative. Amen. My son Ben was working for the Goodman Church Builders a while, so he said afterward, I learned what it means to do something in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was sent by Walter Goodman, his employer, sometimes to make contracts with subcontractors or to, you know, for years I signed checks for the bookstores at Ozark Christian College. It wasn't my money. I was doing it. But you have an account. It belongs to Christ. You are serving as his agent and signing checks in his name. Now, keep that recipe. Recipe's no good if you never cook it. Amen. 